once again to discuss things. I don't, I don't really feel like you need to. On that note, hi everyone, welcome to a mini-sode oh. of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Sid Part 2, joining me today is Zazubar. Oh, I'm, I'm not used to that anymore. See, I, see, on the podcast I do, I usually like to let my people know when we're starting, so... No. Like start yeah, shit, like, I'm just like, whoa! I'm on, I'm yeah. on recording now. I have to stop yeah. all the racial, the racial jokes. <laughs> um, so anyway, welcome to another episode of Horror Month here on Geeky Gentlemen, and these, this is the month where every movie stars Jane Fonda. My father would be proud of me for making that joke. Um, Are you going to watch Barbarella? No. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we're, we're discussing horror movies, horror stories, and, and we're playing a game with a slight horror tinge to it. Um, you have to really try to find a game that has anything to do with horror and isn't a first-person shooter. So Dead Space. Yeah. First-person shooter, or third-person shooter, I suppose. But um, Oh, so you're just looking for stuff that's not just a shooter. Yeah, I don't, I don't like shooters. Um, anyway. I know the one so you anyway, chose, so that's a good choice. Yeah, uh, Predator Concrete Jungle. Woo. Yep. Um, anyway, so uh, Bill... I, Bill's a big horror fan, so I wanted to have him on here, and I thought it'd be fun to do minis where we talk about, like, famous horror stories. So I'm going to pick two, and Bill will get to pick one the way this should work out. Mm -hmm. um, so, um... Do I get a choice? Or, yeah, yeah. Think about it throughout the episode, because I'm going to ask you when we're done. <laughs> um, so, anyway, this is a story, The Monkey's Paw, that I heard when I was in, like, middle school, I think. And it's something that's just kind of stuck with me, and I don't know, I just, I think it's a really good story, and I, th I thought I'd talk to Bill about it. Mm, totally. Totally. I've always heard about it as well, and um, I never really had a full grasp of what exactly a monkey paw was. Like, I mm. always kind of knew it had to do with sort of luck and karma, and it was always a bad omen if you got it, and um, there is a movie on Netflix, I think, called Monkey's Paw. Yeah. So when you told me that's what we were going to do, I was like, oh, that's on Netflix, perfect. And you're like, no, it's a half-hour story, Bill. You can just listen to it on YouTube for free. And I was like, oh, that sounds, like, way cooler. <laughs> so this was... No, a... I mean, I watched... Oddly enough, I think I watched that movie, but illegally on YouTube. Mm. Um, you bad boy. And it's, it's not a particularly good movie. It's it's a fairly solid movie, but I think really what works for it is the premise of the Monkey's Paw. Mm. And the fact that it's set in, like, the South, so it just kind of has natural character to it. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I don't think it would really work. And that <laughs> also, it's also good that they set it in the South, because Gothic literature sort of moved down South during mm. the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, and a lot of, you know, sort of traditional uh, English horror and Gothic tales sort of took on Southern... Southern tropes, like for instance, um, this isn't a good movie, but this is an example of this that's that people uh, people will probably remember, Dracula 2000, oh, God. with uh, a <laughs> piece of shit, with um, with uh, Gerard, but I think it's Gerard Butler as Dracula. Um, it's a really bad movie, uh, and the sequel's worse. Um, I haven't seen the third one because I don't hate myself that much. So, um, <laughs> but they, the best thing that they did is sort of a reference to that is that they took the story of Dracula and they brought it down south in the United States to sort of pay homage to that so i always thought that was mm. cool of them to do and i've always enjoyed that so it's smart that they did that as well yeah i mean i i didn't know that i just think like the southern accents and and just the way of talking and the the locale kind of gives the movie more character than i think it actually deserves right no, I gotcha. um but anyway so like the movie isn't particularly strong but it does get the basic premise of of you know like the whole ruined wishes thing like right, um yeah. I remember back in my days of of posting on forums, there was, like, this game called Ruin a Wish, in which someone would put, like, their wish, and the next post would reply to it, and ruin it for them, and then they'd post their wish, and so on and so forth. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so, like, I remember... You had a lot of free I, times on your hand, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. It was, like, 2009. I wasn't in college yet. Um, 
so like like I remember one time I put like you know I wish I had the same abilities as Amazo in the Justice League cartoon and someone goes well you do but there are no superheroes so you're shit out of luck. Oh, that's <laughs> a good point. Do you think Amazo yeah, can so do like, that for like animals and shit? What? Do you think Amazo is able to do that for animals or is it just strictly superheroes? I have no idea. Um, I guess that's anyway, so, what we're talking about. My bad. So, like, that's kind of the premise of, of Monkey's Paw is just, like, it's a wish, but it's that, like, this is a really old story. Oh, I mean, yeah. we get this genies all the time yeah. and stuff of, like, you know, the, the basic moral is easy to figure out. Be careful what you wish for. And, like, I remember Fairly Odd Parents did an episode with genies and just everything. I was just like, about to that, mention the Fairly Odd Parents, yeah. Yeah, like that that trickster who who gives you what you wish for, but you got to be incredibly specific, otherwise you're screwed. Um, and they made it funny in Fairly Odd Parents because however the genie tried to fuck Timmy over, he was still okay with it. Like he gave he wished for an, I'm, the one I remember the most is he wished for an omelet, but he didn't wish for it on a plate, so it was just in the dirt. And Timmy just starts <laughs> eating it off the ground, and he's just like, "Ooh, crunchy!" And the genie's <laughs> all pissed. I fucking love shit like that. Yeah. Um. Just stuff like that, like that that whole ruined wish thing is is an incredibly fascinating pro- um, premise. Because I mean, I feel like everyone's had that moment where they just wish something would happen, yeah, but they don't really think it through. So like the opportunity, like the opportunity presented itself like that, it'd just be like, oh my god. And like, I mean, you could easily make a parody of this. Like, oh, I, yeah. I have my, my premise right now. You ready? Guy gets the monkey's body. He's like. I wish I had a 13-inch penis, and then one just, like, lands in his face. Yeah, um, yeah like, what does he mean by hat? In his <laughs> mouth? In his ass? Where is, where is it going? <laughs> yeah, just just stuff like that. Um, I really find that idea of the, the, the ruined wish really fascinating. I think Monkey's Paw captures on it in a really brilliantly tragic way, because this yeah. is the one that I've seen that I think is the most tragic of all of them. Oh, yeah, I, I was shocked that I didn't see it coming. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I, I sort of, like, I called it about two minutes before they made the reveal of what the, the fucked up part of the wish was. And mm-hmm. um, the first the first one, the one about the 200 pounds. Um, and then it was only, like, once I realized, because it's like this weird guy shows up, and I was thinking, like, oh, he's probably, like, from some shady corporation or whatever that's going to deliver them the $200, but go... Oh, by the way, uh, we're going to take off, like, one of your fingers or something. Like, something sort of basic like that. But then I, mm-hmm. I thought about it for a second, and I was just like, oh, okay. Somebody's going to have to die. So, yeah. um, that, it hit me right, just in the right place, so. And this is also not, it's, at least until the end, it's not. It's not really, like, a traditional, creepy, sort of gothic horror story like you know it doesn't feature like people walking down shadowy sort of corridors at night with candles and hearing weird mm-hmm. noises in the night there's a little bit of that towards the end but by and large it's sort of like a debate between the three main characters and the soldier towards the beginning about whether or not they should actually try and use this monkey paw and i thought that was really compelling and it sort of made it stood out as a uh, stand out as a horror story so i totally agree yeah, I think my favorite line in the story is when the soldier's like, oh, it's just a bit of magic, I suppose. Just that, that classic British yeah. <laughs> stiff upper lips. Like, oh, yeah, it's just a magical piece of voodoo. Yeah, it's like, don't worry yeah. about it. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool. Don't worry just about it. Just do these drugs um, and shut up. <laughs> but yeah, um, so this is your first time ever l- listening to the story or, or getting into the story. Um, just overall, like, what did you think of it? Oh, um, were you surprised by the quality of it or, or anything, or what's up? Um, well, I'll tell you. Um, I uh, I heavily enjoyed it. I didn't I didn't really know what to expect because it was just so quick when I started listening to it. Because you literally sent it to me and I started listening to it the second I opened the file. So, oh, gotcha. I didn't really have any time to sort of develop expectations about it, and I think that was a good thing. Like, I think I mm-hmm. do that too much now, where it's like. I'll decide I'm going to watch something or read something or listen to something. And then I'll go like, oh, I'll start watching it or listening to it in a couple hours. So then by the time I do it, um, I've built up this version of it. And I have talked about this before. I've built up a version of it in my head. And then it doesn't really – it's either too different from that or it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. So I'm ultimately – I ultimately end up disappointed. But because I just sort of went into this 
not knowing what to expect. I mean, I didn't even know it was set in, you know, sort of gothic England. So that even that was a shock right out, right out the gate. So uh, I wouldn't say it's gothic. I think it's supposed to be like because they they have India. They talk about India like it's a territory again. So I would say it's like 19th century. Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So it's like so it's like late 1800s, probably right. Yeah, probably. It's probably like Sherlock uh, Holmes era. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because they they talk about like machinery and stuff. So. Right, there's a factory, so it's got to be after the the Industrial Revolution. So, um, yeah, which you probably would. But I mean, like. it it does fit that Gothic thing. Oh, you perfectly. You could have it be literally anything else that happens to their son, and it totally fits. Um, yeah, definitely. And it's also it also fits that Gothic mold really well because you know it's about a bunch of rich people you know sort of um, feeling the consequences of a mistake that they make. And that's what almost all of Gothic literature is about. You know, Frank, your Frankensteins, a little bit of your Draculas, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's about these people who try and reach, and a lot of horror is about this, but particularly in Gothic literature, it's about people who sort of reach beyond their grasp and then really, really pay for it in the shittiest ways possible, in ways that they often don't deserve because they're not as bad people as you would think somebody would have to be to deserve a punishment like that. So... Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the other thing. I liked these people, genuinely. Not even, like, sort of going, oh, well, they're sort of of the time, so you sort of have to look past a few things. Like, I, I genuinely liked those characters, and the fact that it was a full cast audio drama and not just, a, like, somebody reading all the dialogue helped it as well, give everybody personalities and everything. So it, it, it was really, really solid. I was really impressed with how much I liked it. Um, my only issue with it, really, and this is more my fault than it is the stories, is that I still don't understand the ending exactly. Um, oh, um, it's pretty simple. The um, They wish for their son to come back, and then he starts knocking on the door, and then he wishes that his son didn't come back. Oh, I missed that line. Okay. I didn't know that he wished for him to not come back. Like, he, he wished that his son was alive again right. is the second wish, and then as his wife's trying to open the door for him, um, he wishes that his son was gone. Oh, okay. I missed that part. Gotcha. That makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, um... Because I, I, I thought guess it was like the son was back, and then she just opened the door and he was gone, and I was like, is he just gonna go roaming the countryside, eating maidens now, or what's gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, no, I, I like that ending quite a bit. It's weird, uh, did you ever watch the old Nickelodeon show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, no, but I'm familiar with it. They have an episode that ends almost in the exact same way. Um, like, the, the kid gets... I think just two wishes, or, or gets three wishes, I think, and the first one, like, kind of actually works out for him. Mm -hmm. And the second one, he wishes his grandpa would come back, and you see, like, his grandpa's car pull into the driveway, and you hear all this knocking, and, like, it's a storm coming, and the kids are freaking out, and then he wishes his grandpa never came back. Oh, okay. Um, There's an episode of Buffy that kind of ends that way, too, where uh, Buffy's sister tries to wish their mother, spoilers for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, by the way, uh, they try to wish their mother back, to, or she tries to wish her mother back to life against Buff, Buffy's wishes, and um, you see, like, her shadow walk past the window, and you hear her speaking as she's trying to open the door, similar to this. And then I forget exactly what happens, but somehow she just vanishes, and she ends up back in her grave. So this story definitely has sort of, like, and I mean, this is going on saying, it's influenced a lot of horror stuff, and and other stuff like it past that, especially with that ending. So it was nice to kind of go back to the roots of that, or what I suspect are the roots of that. Yeah, um, one thing that's weird, because, like, I guess I had this kind of false memory about the story, because, like I said, I first heard this, I think, back in middle school or early high school. Um, the first time I read it, I swear when, like, they have that line where the father says that the paw moved. Right, um, yeah. When he wishes on it. I guess when I read that, I originally thought that he said one of the fingers moved. Like, because I guess the image I had in my head is of, like, the monkey's paw with, like, the thumb and pointer finger down and then the remaining three fingers up. And then he makes the wish and, like, the middle finger goes down. Oh. That's how I always pictured it. Um, and because that would be significantly creepier. <laughs> yeah, well, what I saw in my head was that I thought, like, because didn't he set it down? He says it twisted. He says it twisted in his hand. Oh, okay. Because, I, see, I thought in my head like that it kind of inched across the table like a centimeter or two. Um, so I, I didn't know he was holding it at the time, though. That's way... See, me, that's creepier, though, where it's like, just imagine the feeling in your hand of, like, just something... 
Like, you ever just hold... You ever hold a dead animal before? Mm, yes. And it just sort of feels like... Um, like, the skin sort of feels all flappy, and it's just really, really gross. Like, And I just imagine that, and then imagine that moves. Like, that's really <laughs> fucking creepy to me. Just, like, to hear the bones crunching, and... Ugh, that would really... That would really freak me out now that I'm thinking about that. Yeah, I think... I don't know, like, why I always thought about it that way, but that would always just seem like the craziest thing to me. If just the finger, like, slowly, creakily goes down and stuff with it. Um, but it, it's one of those weird things where, like, this story's influenced a lot, and I think it's good. It's just amazing how much it's influenced. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. Because it's such a one-off. Um, oh, yeah, it's it's not like... It's not really an idea that you could. I guess the, I guess you could, but it would. You kind of repeat the same idea over and over again. Where you can't really serialize this. Like I can sort of see like you could do like like sort of an anthology show where it's just different people get the monkey's paw. But at the end of the day, it's always the same point. Don't fucking use a monkey's paw because yeah, um, you, just... you'll, you won't get what you you'll get what you wished for, but you're gonna fucking pay for it. So. Um, yeah, and I thought the the movie did something kind of interesting with it, where, like, he doesn't realize that it's, you know, legit the first time, so he just wishes for a car that's out in front of this bar, and, like, they go walk past it, and the keys are in the car, and so he's drunk off his ass, and he just, he, he and his friend just get in the car and start taking off down, you know, these backcountry roads, and then, um, they, uh... Uh, they're driving around drunk, and he, like, goes off the road and hits a tree, and his friend goes to flying through the windshield and dies. <coughs> Whoa. And so, like, this is the weakest part of the movie, because if he doesn't think it's real, I don't know why he tries this, but his friend goes flying through the windshield and dies, and he grabs the monkey's paw and says, I wish you were still alive, but nothing happens right away. Mm -hmm. And he sees someone else coming, so he takes off, and then his friend comes back to life, but he's like, um... It's kind of like Pet Cemetery, where, yeah, he's back to life, but he's, like, evil now. Right, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that in both. And so the rest of the movie, the guy's killing people and doing all this messed up stuff, trying to get the final wish for himself. Um, That's a and at the end, Eh, yeah, but at, I guess the ending's kind of clever, because, like, I guess it only works if the wish isn't selfish. Um, that would be interesting if he was, like, trying to reverse everything the Monkey Paw did. Yeah, Even though I mean, he was evil. Does, Kinda. Um, what he does at the end, what what the guy wishes for at the end is that his friend had his soul back. Because, like, that's the idea, is that he came back, but he didn't have a soul, right. so it's just, like, evil. Right. Um, and so he wishes that his friend has had his soul back, and then he's not able to, like, do all this shit anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they kind of follow that, so you could potentially go, go to some clever avenues with it, where, I mean, obviously it's always going to be the wish-gone-wrong story. Right. But I think you could maybe do some clever stuff with it. Fair enough. Um, beyond just, you know, oh, this keeps going sideways on me. Um, right. And I guess... Like, that'd always, be, that'd always be the catalyst, but it's how exactly things go wrong. So. I guess you could kind of play it like the mask comics, where it's like they keep giving the mask to different people, and what it turns them into is always different. So that's mm -hmm. what keeps it interesting and keeps it, you know, fun to read. So I guess you could sort of play with that. But <clears throat> it's just such a simple idea that it, it takes a lot. I think it takes a lot of creativity to continuously do that in a fresh way because of how simple the concept is. Um, yeah. But it works really well it, for the initial story given that this is the introduction of that idea. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those stories that's kind of kicked around in the back of my head for a while. Mm -hmm. And, like, I, I don't know what made me want to rewatch it. Like I watched, oddly enough, I watched the movie before I rewatched the story, or re got, reread the story, rewatched the story, whatever, re-listened to the story. Before you re-experienced the narrative. There we go. That that sounds smart. There we um, go. We we fucking went to college. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I I, I rewatched the movie. I'm like, this isn't very good, but the premise is just so strong that it's carrying through some fairly poor writing. Mm. Um. Like, oddly enough, the, the guy that he gets the monkey's, monkey's paw from seems to kind of sort of be like the original story. Um, oh, like a soldier dude? Like, kind not not a soldier, but it's like it's kind of like a continuation of the original story because, like, he goes to talk to the guy who he got the paw from, and he's like, yeah, my, um, 
dad got it because he ran an inn and a guy couldn't pay, so that's all he could give him. And he took it just because it was a curiosity and he used it to um, pay off the mortgage. But in order to, but the way we got the money for it was a severance package from the military from my brother who died. And then when my mom saw what happened, she used the thing and my brother started knocking on the door. Oh, and, okay. and so that's cool. It is almost like a sequel, kind of, sort of. Um, like an update of those characters, sort of in the background, I guess. Yeah, and, and giving it a way to continue on. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's it's one of those things where this the premise is really strong, but at the same time, it does take, yeah, like you said, a lot of creativity to do fresh things with it again. So I don't really see how you can make much of a franchise out Monkey's of it. Monkey's Paw 2. Don't use it again. <laughs> Monkey's <laughs> Paw 3. Come on, guys. Seriously. <laughs> Monkey's Paw 4. Well, you know what? We're not even going to fucking make any of these anymore. You know what? We tried to teach you a lesson, but we're giving up. That's the whole subtitle. Monkey's Paw 6. What the fuck, Guys! Bro? Guys, come on. <laughs> we gave up on you two movies ago. This is getting insane. So many people are dead. <laughs> and then so many of them are alive, but not really. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of zombie cats and dogs out there. <laughs> Stephen King is very, very upset. He feels ripped <laughs> off. Oh, I, I guess that's the, the really strong part about the story, is it does pull on such a, a human thing. Because, yeah. like I said before, we've all wished, we've all, like, had that in the back of our head, like, oh man, if I could have anything, it would be this. Mm-hmm. And and just pulling on the idea of, of losing someone and having, you know, the possibility to bring them back. I mean, who couldn't jump on that? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, um That's why that's why whenever somebody tries to like in Doctor Who se- series eight the finale, when Clara like, you know, threatens to trap her and the doctor in that volcano planet, you know, real or not, um, just to try and get him to go back and save Danny. You know, even though she's being completely irrational, you totally understand what she's trying to do and why she's trying to do it. And mm-hmm. you can relate to her on that level, even though ultimately she's doing something very stupid and very selfish. So, um, I've, I've, I've always found those sort of situations relatable. Um, is there anything that bugged you about it? Because I'm having a really hard time of thinking of something that I didn't like. Um, I don't know, the, the whole right off of oh it was created by some indian mystic mm-hmm. that that's kind of dated um yeah at, <laughs> at best it's dated also i feel like in to that point why is it a monkey's paw like what is what does a monkey's paw symbolically represent to those people that that's what's mystically in, in, enchanted with this ability um, like, that would have uh, been cool like, to, to, to understand. They do to, to have that. monkeys in India, so well, yeah. maybe that. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. But um, I'd like to know sort of, like, you know, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if the whole reason they're monkeys is because, like, they're kind of human and you know, you're mm. wishing on a dead bo- a dead part of this thing that's kind of human, so, um, you know, it's morbid and sort of, like, you know, it, it just sort of is a symbolic, you know, sort of um, sort of representation of the inherent selfishness and evil in that in using a monkey's paw because of how human and the fact that it's a dead thing as opposed to a genie in a lamp or although i guess that's kind of symbolic too because it's a living being that's trapped and, and, and is totally under your power but you know what i mean um you know one thing that i loved about the harry potter franchise what? is Buckbeak. that too um you that's <laughs> really like what if you'd been right? That would have been amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, you're right, man. Buckbeak was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> no, but like, uh, there was, in the books at least, I don't know how often they did it in the movies. I'd have to go back and rewatch them. There were a lot of like just small little references to like other traditions of magic throughout the world oh, yeah. besides just, you know, British wizardry. Um, and so like they'd say, well, wizards in the Far East don't really like brooms, but they use carpets. Um, like, there's, there was little stuff like that every now and again, right? Right, yeah. I think, like, especially with Mar- um, Marvel, <laughs> with the uh, Universal... Monkey Paw. Yeah, with Universal doing the monster movie universe again. Supposedly. 
we'll see. Um, it'd be interesting if, like, when they get around to something magical, like, I don't know if there's a witch or wizard character that would fit for that, but when they get around to something magical, if you saw a monkey's paw somewhere in the background as, like, set dressing, you know? Oh, sure, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, like, I think that could work if, if it were part of a larger magical universe. Well, they have um, gypsies in all over that universe, so I'm sure you could probably have a gypsy with them. Yeah, if you do, like, the wolf man and you see it, like, in the background. I don't know, I, I, I think it'd be a good opportunity, kind of jumping off of the, the story itself, but I think it'd be a good opportunity for the, Mar- the damn it, the Marvel Monster Universe, the, the Universal Monster... The MMU... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Universal Monster series to do, like, to create a witch character. Um, yeah, and they've sort of tried, like, to... And I guess they... Because I, I haven't seen Dracula Untold yet. Um, it's it's worth it. I tried um, to. I had a I had a, a bootleg copy of it, but when I tried to watch it, like, it kept skipping, like, cu- a couple gotcha. minutes ahead. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do this another time, and I'll, I'll do it in good quality. Look, Dracula Untold is thoroughly all right. That's what I've um, heard, so I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Um... But uh, they sort of have that 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 vampire, the older vampire character who gives Dracula his powers. Um, yeah, yeah. To sort yeah. of tie that together. So he's again, I haven't seen it. You have he's, he's sort of mystical, right? He's he's like fucking, he's waving around his clawed fingers like like a fucking. Yeah, wizard. I mean he's got he's a vampire, so right. um, I don't know, like like that seems like a good opportunity that you could just do this as kind of like a one off. You could do the like that would make sense for the monster movie universe to. To put a lot of one-off, like, of those stories that, that don't really work for franchises, but could work well if tied into a wider thing. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, yes. I totally agree with that, yeah. Like, you just sort of, ha- like, you set it, you set it in a time and place where it's, like, in the background there are references to, like, oh, Lawrence Talbot just got killed by his father by accident because he thought he was a werewolf or, um, some, you know, something along those lines um, would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, just, just something going on, um... Like, I don't know how well that would work, but it would be like the Ant-Man of the monster universe, I guess, is is a good place for a a traditional monkey's paw story. But the problem you have, of course, is how do you stretch this out to more than half an hour? Yeah. Um, Especially on film. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think the benefit there, and this isn't a problem that I have with the story, because I don't really think it matters. Well, not that it doesn't matter, but I don't think it hurts the story. We don't know a ton about these people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, the benefit with a movie would be that you could set them up prior to getting the monkey's paw. You could find out who they are as people and sort of what they do and, 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 and what they might bring to, you know, wishing with the monkey's paw. So you can have that benefit, I guess. But also I think what you might lose with that is that these people are super relatable because we don't know anything about them. We like them. Yeah. But they're avatars. They're there for not literal avatars, but they're they're, av- they're avatars. They're blue and they they live on this weird planet with floating mountains they're and stuff. They're tossing around and fucking having controversial spin-off shows. It's it's, it's crazy. Um. No, oh, no, I was I was talking about James. No, Cameron. I know, I know. Well, I I just figured I'd throw in the show that I've <laughs> never watched in, in order to for mass appeal because I'm a whore. Um. But uh. <laughs> um. Damn it! No, like, oh, okay. So yeah, I, I think you kind of lose the fact that they're likable, and so you relate to them because they're likable and because they're just sort of basic likable people, so you would definitely lose that. Like, I think you'd sort of get like, oh, this guy's kind of a dick because he did this, this, and this, so maybe he deserves whatever the monkey paw gives him. Aside from just the conceit of the very making of the wish is the thing that makes you deserve the fate. Yeah, um, I don't know, like, maybe it'd be interesting, because I, I know exactly how you do the opening credits, and people would hate it, especially PETA. PETA would be pissed, even if you use a CGI monkey. Mm-hmm. But you do the opening credits by seeing the monkey get its damn paw chopped off, and, like, the process of the hand being made. Like, just imagine, your cold open is you don't even play the fucking logos and shit. You just, like, the last preview plays, and then it just opens on a monkey, like, screaming its head off, and it's got like one, ar- it's got a guy holding one arm out on the table, and it's like screaming its head off, trying to pull away, but everything in its power to move away from this guy. And then the dude just picks up a cleaver and bang, and that's your cold open. And then your credits start playing as the the paw gets like mummified and and you know put the enchantment put on it. Hmm. I like that, that 
horrifying. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, it, it works well with what we were talking about before, where the monkey's paw can symbolically represent, like, you've got this human, this thing that is related to us so closely, and mm -hmm. we're fucking butchering it just because we're like, you know, I'd like to have a few wishes. Um, so, I, I think that would definitely work. I think you could also get... I, the, my problem with that is, and I, again, I think it would work for that, but I think the issue with that is that you sort of lose the mystique of the monkey's paw. True. Like, part of the cool... The cool, scary part of the monkey's paw is that it's just there. Like, we don't know if it's an actual monkey's hand or... Um, who yeah, knows? It's, it's like, we don't know that it works, but I think the way you turn it into an hour and a half movie is you show the two other guys first. Right. Yeah. And I, and I feel that. Um, I, I think I think that works for, like, the complete... If you love this story, this is everything you would ever wondered about, you know, listening this to This is the Peter story. Jackson's King Kong of Monkey Paw. Exactly. <laughs> this is the fucking Mary Shelley Frankenstein of of this. So, um, I, I, I think for that it would be cool. Um, but I think a lot of people would be like, oh, I didn't need to know that much about the Monkey's Paw. As people were with King Kong, I didn't need to know that much about King Kong. <laughs> like, I didn't need the ice skating. Um, yeah, <laughs> Why well, you know people like me? I'm like, oh, all the, everything is everything is great. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely doesn't work for a general audience. Um, yeah, certainly. So I I just think the monkey's paw is is something really interesting. I think it could work really well as like a backdrop piece to just flesh out the universe a little bit. Sure. Um, sure. So I don't know. It's, it's one of those stories that that kind of lingers with you a little bit, and it, it just kind of sticks in in the back of my head. I will um, never ever use a monkey's paw for sure, <laughs> just on the chance that this story was was a fucking actual event. Well, like you can use it. You just have to be incredibly specific. Um, yeah, but don't they? But don't they say like no matter how like no matter what you say, it will find a way to make you pay. Uh, they don't say that specifically. They say that. It just ruins everything. Um, gotcha. And like the the one guy says, everything happens so um, out of the blue that it, you might dismiss it as coincidence. Um, yeah, that was great setup, by the way, because it sort of it makes it sort of seem it almost makes it seem less scary at first because it just sounds like oh, so it's gonna naturally present itself. That sounds less scary than some fucking random dude showing up on your doorstep with a briefcase briefcase full of money, dropping it, and then leaving without saying a word. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of a trigger-happy TV bit. A guy's, like, walking through a parking garage, you know, just on his way to work or whatever, and then there's another dude with this briefcase, and he's like, all right, all right, here it is, here it is, and he, like, slides it across the floor to him. Now just let her go, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> just put her at the old man, just like, let her go, man. <laughs> That's the uh, the wife's fucking adulterer. Yeah, I guess. Um, but but anyway, so yeah, I I think that that sort of helped help the twist with the with the son dying for me anyway because I was just like, oh, it's gonna naturally present itself. Everything's gonna be fine. And then it's like, well, yeah, it's gonna naturally present itself by murdering their son. And I was like, oh, that wasn't the way I, I thought it was gonna go. Um, yeah. Um. And then the idea of just, like, the mangled body. I don't know how that naturally presents itself, but whatever. Yeah, um, I guess... So, obviously, magic has to be involved, because otherwise, you know, it's it's not a real monkey. It's not a real magical sort mm -hmm. of... I guess what bothers device. me about this being Indian, as opposed to... Like, it feels more voodoo than Indian to yeah, me, for some Yeah, I agree with that. I don't really um, have monkeys in a lot of, um... In a lot of those countries, though, where voodoo is very, very prominent... Yeah, so that that does create a problem. They do for... have them, but they're just not sort of they're islands, so they don't really have a ton of them, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it could work, I guess, if you really want to. It just feels more voodooish than I I don't know. My perception of India doesn't involve voodoo. No, not that, at all. But... Their 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 beliefs in sort of I mean, except for the caste system, um, their beliefs in religion all seem very peaceful and sort of um. And sort of like, you know, and, and their stuff is very karma based as well. And this is definitely, I think, karma related, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like something they would create because they're not like that sort of vindictive type of people generally. Maybe that's stereotypically racist or whatever, but, you know, I would imagine they, I don't know. I, I would imagine they wouldn't that's mind. Racist. I'll ask Steve if that's racist. Oh, okay, cool. um, <laughs> and when he says yes, then you can apologize. Oh, yeah, um, I'll be like, Steve, I'm a bad person. <laughs> 
<laughs> you need to accept that okay. about me. Okay. Anyway, um, so is there anything else you wanted to say about this? Because I'm I'm about out. Me too. I'm gonna make one comment before we end this thing though. There is a trope in older stuff that bothers me. It's not a trope. It's just a part of the culture. I fucking hate it when husbands and husband and wives call each other mother and father. It's fucking creepy. I hate that shit. It bugs <laughs> the shit out of me. Whenever I would watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer as a kid, the one that we did the commentary on all those years ago, which I think was like two years ago. Um, all those years ago. No, it was three. Back when cars were still a new thing. Yeah, exactly. I think it was like three years ago. Um, but uh, in that, Santa and his wife call, call each other mother and father, even though they don't have any fucking children. And that always bu- bugged the crap out of me because it just came off as like that's not that's not right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do a rating. Um, I'll let you go first. It's kind of hard not to give it a five, just because it's so pleasantly simple and everything that it attempts, it succeeds in really well. So. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 just for, and I'm sure you'll, you'll probably say this as well, just for the lack of detail about the monkey's paw. And mm-hmm. also with, it doesn't really fit an Indian backdrop either. So I'll give it a 4.5 for that reason, but there's no reason not to listen to this. It's short, it's simple, it's great. So perfect, it's the perfect time of year to to experience this story. So go out there and listen to it. I'm sure you'll you'll link it in. What, a 4.5 out of 5 what? Don't forget the game. Oh, shit, it's been so long. Um, <laughs> ooh, I'm going to give it 4.5 out of 5. <sighs> Dead sons. <laughs> Dead mangled zombie sons knocking on fucking doors. Even though they probably wouldn't have muscle control. So it'd probably just be like, eh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give it uh, 4.5 out of 5 pounds. Um, you can't. You got to. You got to admit to me. It was really hard not to just say four point five out of five monkey butts. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to say. I didn't want bus. to either. But I was like, oh, that's the easiest fucking thing. <laughs> four point five out of five mangled monkey paw fingers. I don't know. Sure, um, that works. Four point five <laughs> out of five pawless monkeys. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's fucked up. <laughs> uh, so they, they just left they it alive. They don't understand alive. English. They don't fucking care. <laughs> A lot of them um, have less developed brains than most other. So maybe it was one of them. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Bill, what story are we going to talk about next time? Okay, so I had to think about this for like a good ten minutes, and the whole time I was going, I have no fucking idea. So until I hit upon this. So what I would like to talk about next time, and I don't know how much juice we're going to get out of this, but it's good, and I want you to read it, and you may have already, but even if you have, I want to talk about it anyway. I'd like to discuss the first story that H.P. Lovecraft ever wrote. Um, I think it's called The Thing in the Cave. Um, oh my god, you're, you're, you're not going to believe this, Bill. What? I literally read that last night. Really? Okay, perfect. Let's do that, because I fucking love that story, and I want to talk about it with somebody. So, let's do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, that's really weird. That's fucked up, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, cool. So we'll be talking about the... the so you're already man- prepared. <laughs> yeah, the, the Cave and the Beast, something like that. Hold on, just, just two seconds. I'm almost okay. positive it's called The Thing in the Cave, but I'm probably wrong. I, I literally have the the complete works of H.P. Lovecraft right yeah, here. Yeah, that's, so that's just... what I have as well. That thing is fucking amazing, by the way. Yeah, I got it at Barnes & Noble, and I'm going to try to read through it throughout October. It's um, really good. The Beast in the Cave. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, read Dagon, by the way. I'm going to try to read through all of it. Uh, it's not as good as that first story, strangely, but it's it's really good in terms of setting up sort of the universe that he created later. Cool. All right, so everyone, thank you very much for listening. Until next time, I'm the Philosopher. I'm the Fanatic! And we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things. Monkey paws or not. Ha 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 